So how's everybody doing today? A little louder. You know, the semester starts on Monday, and I've welcomed hundreds of new students to the campus during orientation. And I tell them each time that you all can't wait to see them in class starting Monday. So we're very excited about that. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rick Muma, the provost at Wichita State. I'm glad you could be here today to participate in this year's kickoff event. I think this is going to be a great academic year, considering all the things that we've been planning this past summer and past year. But first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your work this past year. We've made some tremendous progress, so thank you for what you do every day to support our university. I'd like to start off by uh, uh, honoring someone and giving someone some special recognition, and that's to Dr. Alex Schwarzberg. Alex, would you please stand? <laughs> Stay standing. Um, and we're congratulating Alex for the pre Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers, the highest honor bestowed by the government on STEM professionals. He is the first recipient ever from Wichita State and only the third in the state of Kansas. So congratulations again to, to Alex. And this award recognizes Alex's uh, basic research that he does in chemistry. He's already been to the White House for, to get his award back in late July, so it's quite an honor, Alex. So last spring, we uh, lost President Bardo, Bardo after a long battle with an illness. I know this was stressful to many of you, and I just want to say how much I appreciate everyone for rising to the occasion and continue to move our university forward. This is what he would want us to do. I also wanted to let you know that as several members of the uh, community have asked me about Deborah Bardo and how she's doing. I had a really nice dinner a few weeks ago with her and members of her family, along with Rick and Marche and Aaron, and she's doing great. We shared a few laughs, and as many of you know, Deborah has a very wicked sense of humor, uh, so we were able to continue along that vein. We look forward to seeing her later uh, this fall in October when the Experiential Engineering Building will be formally named the John Bardo Center. So through all of this, We've been very fortunate to have Andy Tompkins, who has been our interim uh, president, and you'll hear from him later on in the program. But thank you, Dr. P Tompkins, for everything that you do. In my 23 years as a faculty member here, I found the university works best when we're all talking about issues important to the university. And at this, at this, after this event, at the picnic that follows, please introduce yourself to someone you haven't met before. I especially encourage you long-term Wichita Staters, and I know several of you are here today, to introduce your, yourself to someone new to get to know them. This week, around 40 new faculty members and many more staff members are beginning their career at Wichita State. Many others have started in the years since our last kickoff event. If you're new to Wichita State in the past year, please stand to be recognized. So, awesome group of people, I have to say that. I'd especially like the campus to get to know our two newest deans, because they'll have an important role in moving this campus forward. So first, please welcome Dr. Larissa Jenin. Larissa. <laughs> Dr. Jenin is the new dean of the W. Frank Barton School of Business, and prior to joining WSU, she served as the associate dean in the School of Economics and Business Administration at St. Mary's College of California, and was responsible for strategic planning, accreditation, faculty, and undergraduate programs. With a very student-centered mindset, 
Dean Jenin is committed to supporting faculty, staff, and stakeholders in ways that empower, energize, develop, and advance them. And believe me, I've had many, many conversations with Dr. Jenin, and she's already well on her way down this path. She's excited to be here joining us today and representing the Barton School at such a pivotal time at the, at the, in the history of the school and also the university. So congratulations, Dr. Jenin. So now, please welcome Dr. Colleen Pugh, the new Dean of the Graduate School. <laughs> Dr. Pugh is also Associate Vice President for Research and Technology Transfer. She joined us in late July from the University of Akron, where she was a synthetic organic polymer chemist and spent the last 21 years at the University of Akron. She is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and just elected as fellow as Amer in the American Chemical Society. She will work on the advancement and grad of graduate education and faculty-led research. Thank you, Colleen. I appreciate that nearly 200 faculty and staff members over the last year have participated in the refresh of the strategic planning process that began last year and will continue this year. The process under the leadership of K. Mock Morgan and involving many of you is meant to re-examine the plan adopted in 2013 and make needed updates that will helpful, be helpful to the university and the new president, which will be selected by the Board of Regents later this fall. In turn, the president's executive team developed the 1920 university priorities. You'll find these on the reverse of your program that you all have. These priorities represent a program of work to continue implementing the strategic plan by serving key constituencies on and off campus. We'll talk a little bit more about those a little bit later. And last year, we, when we started developing priorities in 18, 19 academic year, we had some really good results come out of that priority list. So we continued to uh, develop a, a culture of advancement focused on shared governance, based on trust and integrity. And we've had several town halls, more than 200 people have uh, participated in various different workshops and other gatherings to make sure that we're all taking uh, this process very seriously and wrestling with difficult issues and moving the university forward. Another record year of enrollment growth, especially in our incoming freshman class, another record in the history of the, of the institution. We started three new degree programs, 19 certificates, and 20 badges. This is on top of starting 14 new degree programs over the last three years. And we've had another record year of research funding in the amount of $136 million this fiscal year. So those are awesome outcomes. There are many other accomplishments that can be found in the link on the slide. None of this could be possible without you, so again, I thank you. So now for a little bit of change of pace. It's my pleasure to be joined on the stage by the presidents of each of our senates. As I mentioned earlier, one of our university priorities is to continue advancing a culture of trust and integrity. Our constituent senates play a key role in the advancement of this initiative, so I'm pleased that they could be here with us today and to share in the conversation. So, panel, are you ready? So, we're going to start with a little lightning uh, round. So, this is going to be easy. So, can you tell us your name, a little bit about yourself, and one of the most important goals for your constituency groups this year? Yeah, this is the easy one. Jeff, Jeff Jarman, <laughs> uh, happy to be starting my uh, 24th year here at Wichita State in, in the fall. Uh, spent most of my time at the university serving as the director of debate and coaching the debate team. Serve now as the director of the Elliott School of Communication. And I'm really excited that the Senate's bringing forward a change to general education this fall. Look forward to bringing that proposal to the faculty, having some uh, town halls where we discuss the merits of the change and bring that ultimately to a vote of the faculty later this fall in the hopes of bringing a new general education program. 
Yeah, and the Senate's been working on this for a long time. Many of you long-termers, or you long-term Wichita staters, as I said earlier, have been talking about general education since I've been here and probably before, and I think we're finally making some progress on that. So Katrina. My name is Katrina Miller. I'm the student body president. I am a senior studying social work with a minor in women's studies. Um, I think the biggest thing um, is we've seen an increase within health and wellness within the student body, whether that's mental health awareness or even just the why coming to campus and health and wellness there again. Um, so in making sure that we're keeping up with that and still supporting that on campus, um, like with a student support services building, that would be really beneficial to the student body. Uh, Julie Scott with the Office of Financial Aid, where I work as a data analyst. I also have the dub the, the term data nerd in our office. Um, I've been at WSU for about 12 years, but this year in particular, I get the distinct pleasure to serve about 1,200 of our unclassified professional staff here at the university. This year, our Senate is undertaking a big task, and that is to bring our Senate mission into sharper focus with the development of a strategic long-range plan for the Senate over the next five years. And with that, we really hope to identify who we are, where we're going as a Senate and as unclassified professionals, and how we can connect and engage all those 1,200 staff members to every great thing that Wichita State has to offer. Thank you, Julie. And it's not lost on me, and I know others in the room, that the UPs are the largest Senate, Senate on campus. Um, so, an important group here at the university. Hello, my name is Matt Houston. I have been employed with Wichita State for 13 years as an electrician in facility services. I am the USS president for this year. One of our goals is to advocate for more professional development for all employees. And also, we do look forward with working with UP because we are looking at working together on some committee work. Thank you, Matt. So. Matt and Julie, your two Senates have been cooperating on a number of fronts. Can you highlight some of the initiatives that your Senate is working on, or that your Senates are working on, and what are the few of your combined goals? A few initiatives that we are going forward with is we are looking to join committees. The committees will be the professional development, university policy review, and service. As Senate, men, Senate members, we look forward to utilizing each other and looking at all aspects of employment across the university to help with these committee reviews. Yeah, in addition to that, we'll also be working with university leadership and a special task force that will be looking at staff recognition and seeing just exactly how we can make some really positive recommendations to recognize staff in addition to those always coveted staff raises and things. Yeah. So. so should, since you brought that up, I, I think it's important to address. And so that's one of our goals this year is to extend that market analysis that we did for faculty that we started a couple of years ago and implemented part of that this past year for other members of the Wichita State community. So we're going to be working on that next year, <laughs> or this coming year. Jeff, what are some of the other initiatives in the faculty Senate that will be advanced through your priorities and things that you're working on? Yeah, you know, one of the prior slides listed new faculty reward structures as a part of the university strategic plan. Last couple of years in the Senate, we created um, a, a new system to reward uh, non-tenure track faculty. We brought the Uniscope model to the departments and the colleges. And this fall, uh, we'll bring another initiative. Last year, we had a committee workload ad hoc committee, an ad hoc committee on faculty workload, uh, who will bring recommendations, we'll bring those to the faculty this fall as well to try to create new incentives to really reward faculty for the work they do. Yeah, and I know from experience and uh, Dr. Betty Smith Campbell's leadership who's here, and she's a past president of the Senate, a lot of work went into that this past year, and we're looking forward to um, moving, moving that along the way at the university level. So Katrina, the backgrounds of our students are more diverse than ever. What do you think is important for faculty and staff to know about helping make these students successful in their life and work? So it's pretty simple. It's 
just interacting with your students, making sure that you're talking with them and educating them about the resources here on campus. Ask them if they're succeeding or struggling, and if they're succeeding, telling them about an honor society here on campus or telling them about, about a scholarship. If they're struggling, referring them to counseling and prevention services or getting them in touch with a tutor. Really, things like that are so beneficial to college students. And I know, personally, as a first-generation student, that would have been so helpful for me during my first year here. Yeah, and just so you know, uh, the university actually has been working on this for a number of years. And we've been recently recognized to be in the top 3% of universities moving students up the social mobility index. Um, and we'll continue to work on that. But that's a, a major achievement of this institution to be at, in the top 3% of among all universities across the United States. So any other last minute sort of things that you guys want to talk about today? Since you asked, <laughs> Matt and I, on behalf of our senates and all of our constituents among staff, have a friendly challenge to our faculty senate members to do a friendly battle to stock the Shocker support locker later this fall on campus. So Jeff, what do you say, are you in? Any fans of How I Met Your Mother? <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> so I wanna uh, thank them for participating today. Let's give them a round of applause. As Emily Patterson makes her way up to the stage, uh, Tyler Pinnock, one of our famous uh, videographers, has put together several short videos. Why don't you take a look at this first one? If Wu could talk, what do you think he would sound like? Wu would say it's a great day to be a shocker. He would sound really high pitched. So he'd be like, Woo! Whoa. I'll be calling woo. <laughs> no, go shocks. <laughs> Would you mind telling me what does Shocker Nation mean to you? Uh, <laughs> Shocker Nation, I think it's more the, of a geography. It's more of an attitude. It's a united, uh, I don't know, camaraderie, I think, among other WSU alumni. Do you think you could give us your best Greg Marshall impression? Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Patterson. I'm the Executive Director of Facilities Planning. Our office looks after campus master planning as well as the design and construction of new buildings, remodel projects, and deferred maintenance projects that aren't handled in-house by facility services. We have a fantastic team of three experienced licensed architects, Todd Wilsoncroft, Kevin Young, and David Stouth, and a property manager, Crystal Stegman. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but we, there has been quite a bit of construction all over campus for the past few years. And well, this year is no exception. But it is important to note that although I am about to walk you through the building projects that are already underway and those that will get started this year, we are trying to, what we are trying to achieve on campus isn't just about construction. It is about creating spaces for people to learn and collaborate. Elements like landscaping, lighting, outdoor seating, signage, and art work together to create an environment that can enhance the campus experience be welcoming to the community, and attract and retain students, faculty, and staff. So first, let's take a look at the new building construction projects that are already underway, and we'll wrap up this year. In late October, the NIAR Advanced Virtual Engineering and Technology Lab, aka NIAR AVIT, it's the first time you've probably heard that acronym, um, will be complete. This university-owned building will house the NIAR Crash Dynamics Lab and Virtual Engineering Lab that are both currently housed in the NIAR building. Quick fact, in case there is a trivia night soon. The reaction mass below the crash sled contains 70,000 pounds of rebar and 2.5 million pounds of concrete, just in one area. <laughs> um, 
Next we have uh, Nyar Abbott's Neighbor to the West is the newest partnership building currently called P3, working name, because since we have P2. This developer-owned building is three stories tall and with an incredible view to the north from the third story windows and was designed to house research and development labs on the first floor. The shell of the P3 building is scheduled to be complete in October and the interior will be finished out as tenants come on board. The Nyar Atlas building will stand on the footprint of the former virtual engineering lab building. This university-owned building will house advanced composites manufacturing equipment for Nyar research. Construction has just started on this high bay pre-manufactured building and will go quickly. It's set to wrap up by the end of the year. In January, the Steve Clark YMCA and WSU Student Wellness Center housing student health services and counseling services will be complete. The WSU wellness area has been designed with significantly more exam and counseling rooms to accommodate and serve the growing student population. You can see it's already well underway on campus as you drive by. The Y building will house exercise studios, two basketball courts, a drop-in child care center, and a Wesley urgent care center on the first floor. The second floor will hold a three-lane running track and weight and cardio areas. The YMCA East Courtyard will also be the home of the first bronze Wushop sculpture. Standing at over eight feet tall, the sculpture embraces the play-angry spirit of vintage Wu and will be a great spot for students and campus visitors to stop and take a picture with Wu. See, there's already a lot. Let's keep going. Two new athletics facility projects are currently under construction. Both projects are completely financed with private dollars. The first project shown here is the fifth phase of the X Stadium development that began in the 1980s. The new building will house a ticket booth, baseball coaches' offices, as well as a training room, team room, and locker room for the Shocker baseball team. The building is set to be complete in January 2020 just in time for the spring season. DIRT is already moving for the next athletics project, a new student athlete success building adjacent to Coke Arena that will provide larger tutoring, tutoring area for student athletes and will have coaches offices for track and cross country as well as men's and women's golf, a large athletic training room, locker rooms, team room and um, training room for the track team. As part of the project, the administrative and coaching area of Coke Arena will also be renovated. You'll see the building come out of the ground with steel this fall. It's scheduled to be complete next summer, next July. Okay, some other projects to anticipate this year that aren't already underway. Um, converting the Student Health Services Suite in Albrecht Hall when they move out to the Y into a joint space for the psychology clinic, part of the Fairmont College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and the Play Therapy and Counseling Clinic, part of the College of Applied Studies. The project will create a space that will allow both of these programs to fulfill their accreditation requirements. Work will begin shortly on the phase one remodel of Henry and Hall. I think there's a lot of people have been waiting for this one. The project fo focuses on improving health and safety in areas where silica dust is created from the process of making clay and creating ceramics. Two new dust collection systems will be installed as well as improved lighting and room conditioning in the remodeled areas. We still have a long way to go in this building, but this is a fantastic and exciting first step. Keeping water out of buildings is definitely something that enhances the campus experience and seems to be a constant battle as our buildings age. Abla Library, Jardine Hall, already started, and the NIAR building will all be receiving a new roof this fall. All projects should wrap up by the end of the semester. Also in Albro Library, construction will begin in September to enhance the 24-hour study room. The project will expand the 24-hour study space currently available at the library, as well as at a restroom that is available when the library is closed. This is one of the amenities that is most requested by students but honestly has been a challenge to provide 
because the special collections area is located in the basement below the study area, and we found that it is not ideal to run plumbing over priceless archives. <laughs> Before the new president starts next year, we're taking the opportunity to freshen up and modernize the president's residence with new neutral interior finishes, as well as some interior, interior rework to create a separation between the event space and the private residence. This project is funded with private dollars. In Hubbard, two large general biology classrooms will be converted to three right-sized labs. So, sorry, two large general biology labs will be converted into three right-sized labs next summer. The additional lab will allow for more lab sections to be available for scheduling. This will be an all-hands-on-deck process to complete construction between the end of finals in May and the start of school in August next year. Very, very plumbing intensive projects that'll take some work. The design of Woolsey Hall, the new building to house the Barton School of Business will kick off in September after the architectural design team is selected. It is anticipated that construction will begin in the summer of 2020 and the building will be complete in time for classes in the spring semester of 2022. Facilities planning is helping Kristen Beal and Discover WSU facilitate the placemaking initiative that is underway on campus. The intent is to create an attachment to space through temporary installations that go beyond building projects. Thanks to a grant from Knight Foundation Fund at the Wichita Community Foundation, we are able to move forward with a few exciting projects this year, including painting a mural on the South Clinton Hall steps, installing a hammock lounge currently slated between Neff and Wallace Hall, and brightening the sunken patio at Oblo Library. As you can see, we do have a lot on our plate, but we aim to create projects that are inclusive, conducive to learning, inviting to the community, and make everyone proud to be on campus. Your patience is appreciated as Wichita State continues to grow. Thank you for letting me walk you through the exciting changes that are underway. See you on campus. Memory. Probably when we Probably went to the when we went to the That's mine as well. That is mine as well. That's mine. As well. Yeah, you nailed it. What do you think Wu eats? Uh, I think Wu eats competition. Nutrients from the soil. I think it's pretty well known that Wu is a cannibal. I mean, he's chewing on a piece of wheat. It's kind of hard to deny. Chocolate. Anything chocolate. Do you have any chocolate to show us? Oh, yes, I do. I can help there. Covered Oreos or some <laughs> Nestle's Crunch Bars, Hershey's Dark Chocolate, Reese's Peanut Butter Chocolate. Two hours later. Peanut Butter Filled Pretzels. Those are really good. <laughs> All right. Yep. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Dennis Levesey. I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering, and I'm joined here with four of our colleagues. And we're going to talk about sort of a Frankenstein chimera uh, that we could spend any time, you know, spend days on either one of the two parts, applied research and community engagement. Really what we're going to be talking about is how do we uh, tell the story of what we're doing outside the classroom. But before we get in, I'm going to have my colleagues introduce themselves. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Larissa Jenin, and I'm delighted and honored to be serving as a W. Frank Barton School of Business Dean. Good afternoon. My name is Marche Fleming Randall. I'm the Vice President for Diversity and Community Engagement, and it's truly a great day to be a shocker. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andy McFadden. I'm the Executive Director of Strategic Communications at WSU Tech. Good afternoon. I'm Eric Hine. I'm the Senior uh, director for Research and Technology at Spirit Our Systems. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We all know what our primary mission is as a university. We're here to educate 
the population of Kansas, of Wichita. Uh, but one of the things that I've really been spending a lot of time thinking about and having some angst on is all the different things that we do and all the different priorities that we do beyond that. And as an urban serving university, we do a lot. Uh, and the point of this panel is really for us to talk a little bit about that. And I'm gonna do something very unfair. I'm gonna put our newest person on the spot. She's been here uh, less than a couple months. And, but I know Larissa's been meeting with everyone and talking to folks and learning about WSU. And so uh, with your, not outsider eyes, but with your new person eyes, can you sort of comment on what you've learned in this space? Thank you, Dennis. Well, definitely community engagement is at the core of what we do. And in my meetings and conversations with faculty, staff, and other members of our internal and external community, it's very clear that we're already doing very successful work, ranging from our professional edge program, where we develop our students professionally and engage industry executives to deliver workshops, meet the firms, the accounting recruiting event, uh, the remarkable work of our centers, the CDBR, the Kansas Outlook Conference that's coming up, uh, Center for Entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship with the engagement of the judges on all of our competitions. Graduate certificate program with Cargill has been very successful, and there are many, many other examples. Definitely we have opportunities as we move forward, and the opportunities would be to further engage our community and building uh, customized programs for companies and for students who would be interested. Also, I would say uh, creating more internship opportunities and job opportunities, uh, mentoring our students by engaging uh, the executives and industry leaders on these journeys. Maybe even having executives in residence uh, who could come and be with us and engage with our faculty, students, and the community. Most importantly, as um, in a few days, it's gonna be two months on the job, and I'm very excited. I think the theme for this year in the W. Frank Barton School of Business will focus on the five E's, and that would be to create an exciting, exceptional, exhilarating, electrifying, most importantly, engaging experience for all of us on this journey in the Barton School and Wichita State University. We are on a mission to shock the world with our brilliance as it relates to innovation, impact, and engagement. Thank you. There will be a quiz, and you'll be asked to repeat the five E's as you leave. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna follow up with another unfair question for Larissa. So Emily was up here talking about spaces and the things that we're doing on campus. How is Woolsey Hall gonna enable you to uh, to further the mission of all the exciting things you're talking about? Well, it's an exciting uh, engagement and initiative for the entire campus because the Wolsey Hall will be state-of-the-art facility serving the entire campus. In its own way, it will be a masterpiece. All of the buildings on campus are masterpieces in their own ways. It will allow us to create stronger bridges, linkages, and connections, both internally and externally with our community. It will further advance our mission on applied learning and research, and more importantly, it will raise the profile and the image of our university. Specifically, um, how the Woolsey Hall will impact the internal community, it's gonna be an opportunity to unify our faculty, our staff, our students, uh, and all the members of the community in the ways of collaborative research, applied learning, uh, through our facilities that will include uh, research labs, meeting spaces, um, and other ways of how we can engage in meaningful conversations to work with us students and inspire them and excite them. And in terms of external community, definitely opportunities for the Woolsey Hall to be the place to engage our advisory board members, to engage our companies, our partners, our donors, our employers, and spend more time um, on campus in our new building to form meaningful relationships to advance our students personally and professionally. And also opportunities to find ways how we can link academic programs to meaningful personal and professional lives for our students and how to create spaces for our faculty staff to be inspired and be engaged. Excellent. 
Uh, it's very clear that <laughs> the building has high expectations. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love the enthusiasm. Love it. All right. So perhaps the two units that are, that are represented here that have the most obvious connection to external stakeholders and external partners would be uh, the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement and WSU Tech. Uh, so represented here by Marche, who everyone knows and loves. No, no, all right. And Andy, uh, who everyone knows and loves as well. So I want to toss out this to you guys uh, individually to comment on the things that you do in your divisions that some of us uh, in other areas might not know about of how you're helping advance the mission of the university. Glad you asked that, Dennis, and thank you for showing me some love. <laughs> I got a little worried. Um, I always tell people Wichita State is what greatness looks like when it comes to community engagement. Um, we are always in the community trying to help. People call on us to do things for the ICT. I have TRIO and GEAR UP programs who are the outstanding and the top of the line in 259 school district that gets out there and get things done. Give it up for yourself. Yes. We go to health fairs, because I think we're the healthiest community, so we go to health fairs, we go to job fairs, because we need people to work. Um, we have people in the community that come and seek us out to help do things. But the two most things that I want to talk about is that we do have ROTC, and the first set of cadets will go through next Monday and be what we call the historical group of ROTC cadets. So we're really excited about that. They will be housed in liberal arts and sciences. The command center will be out of our area that we will man it. Um, but they're already parking cars in the community. You're going to see some water buffaloes, not real buffalo carrying water, but it's a machine um, that's going to be there. Um, and they're going to really be enthused about you know, getting out into the community and also on campus if you have any events that you can reach out to them. Um, we have the big football game that's coming September 7th between Langston University and McPherson College that will be here on our campus. We're hosting. We don't have anything to lose because we're not playing. <laughs> so we're going to be winners out of this, but we do have Shockaboo, a pig, that the defeated coach will have to kiss on the 50-yard line. <laughs> now, you're talking about some community involvement. We want to put lips on everything we touch. So that pig is going to be out there supporting um, both teams. So when we talk about community, we really love to ask people to come to Wichita State, host your programs here, um, ask questions. How can we help you? Call on us, and we'll be right there to do what we need to do. And again, we always say Wichita State is what greatness looks like, Dennis. And we should be recruiting those students who are playing football once they're ready to matriculate on. Andy. So yes, I'd like to share three strategic initiatives that we have that I think draw a really good picture of the community engagement that we have at WSU Tech. The first and one of our most prominent is we are entering our fourth year of our Wichita Promise Scholarship Program, where we work closely with uh, employers and the community to craft short-term programs that provide tuition and fees for students in high-wage, high-demand career fields. We also wrap that experience in personal career coaching, things like soft skills, resume uh, workshops, interview prep, things of that nature. And then upon successful graduation of those programs, we provide them one or more guaranteed interviews with our employer partners. So we're moving into our fourth year of that and excited to see that continue to grow and evolve as we add programs and, and move through this next academic year. The second one was, has been really a surreal experience for me. About, uh, I'd say, November of 2018, uh, WSU Tech received a grant from uh, the Metallica All Within My Hands Foundation. And I mean, yeah, which is really awesome, right? And so we crafted a unique program called Women in Manufacturing, where um, much similar to the Wichita Promise Scholarship Program, it pays tuition and fees. It has allowed us to create some unique programming that's a little bit outside of the box. One of my favorites is our uh, Women in Welding Program, 
where we have students, the group of ladies on campus, and they'll graduate in October. And they're on campus learning right now, and they spend a half day welding with us and a half day with one of our employer partners, JR Custom Metals, where they are paid for their time and um, learning culture. And when they graduate in October, they will have full-time jobs waiting for them at the end of that program. So, so a little bit of outside of the box types of things. Also, I think Dr. Utash is here. And so it was a really surreal moment when we got to meet Metallica backstage. And they're like, economic development, we love our fans. We want to give them a chance at a better life. And then we go out, and it's like front row tickets. And they're like, ah! And I'm like, this looks really weird. But I'm in. It's great. And <laughs> so with that being said, the third would be um, finally in February, early this year in 2019, Dr. Utash, the president of WSU Tech, um, was appointed to the American Workforce Policy Advisory Board, and so we're really excited for her to have a seat at the table. That's a big deal for our local community, Kansas, and our, both of our institutions, WSU and WSU Tech. Um, so we're really excited to have her participate that, in that and the design and implementing strategies and training programs to continue to help employers meet their changing workforce needs while promoting multiple pathways to families being able to sustain themselves in, in new career fields that are relevant. And it's that multiple pathways, that, that the, the beauty and the promise of the affiliation between WSU Tech and, and Wichita State, which it's hard to believe that's only been less than two years, uh, is to create multiple entry points for people to start at WSU Tech, matriculate through, have a job, come to WSU, the BAS, the Bachelor of Applied Sciences degree. There's all kinds Don't of opportunities. Don't steal my thunder. That's my final closing. Oh, part. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you your notes, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one has ever accused me of following a script. <laughs> uh, so uh, I do want to build off of what Andy was talking about, though, with the Wichita Promise. Right? So the Wichita Promise is an amazing program that connects students to jobs to our industry employers, one of which is Spirit. And so Eric is here. Uh, Eric was, is filling in at the last minute for Pierre Harder, who some, many of you know who is sick. And Eric, thank you for doing this. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to have to follow Andy. Yeah. <laughs> better you than I. <laughs> uh, and so can you sort of comment on, you know, what does Spirit see? Why does Spirit want to be on campus? How are they benefiting from partnering with the university and as we have this, we're going to change the world view? Yeah, sure. So Spirit's had a, a longstanding relationship with WSU. And when, we, when the uh, Innovation Campus was opening up and that announcement was made, we really were looking, trying to figure out the right way to engage. And over the last few years, uh, we were able to sign a collaboration agreement with WSU and Nair. And now we actually have an on-campus presence where we have approximately 50 uh, engineers and various members of our integrated product teams actually up here at Spirit. Uh, the reason we did that is we wanted a place where we could be really close to our pipeline for students and also um, a place where we could have really a, a dedicated area to develop cutting edge research uh, with the latest tools. So we, we see really three, three big advantages to coming out here. One is access. We get, we get access to some of the most world class testing laboratories uh, in the country out here through Nair. We also get access to a student population which is our future workforce. And uh, that's coupled with um, the applied learning benefit to us. Uh, we're really interested in getting a workforce that comes to us that's already experienced the type of work they're going to see in industry. That's something that's extremely valuable because for, for someone like Spirit, we don't have to spend time bringing them up to speed. So applied learning is, is a tremendous benefit for us. And we get to build relationships with students while we're out here on campus. We also get our um, diversity of thoughts a big, a big part of what drives innovation. So being exposed to uh, different groups, uh, different ways of thinking, really will help us, I think, build a really a, a richer portfolio going forward. Uh, the other thing is, just from a research standpoint uh, and funding for research, going together to look for funding and for leveraging funding opportunities, uh, when you have just a university going or just a corporation going, it's, it's not near as effective as having the person developing the technology and the person that are consuming it working together. And so for us, being sure that we have research that's being done that's relevant to spirit, 
uh, is, is really powerful. And you've seen the growth in research at WSU. We're continuing to see it at, uh, at Spirit. And, and for us, that's a, a tremendous growth mechanism that, that actually supports our growth strategy at Spirit as well. And I'm going to build off that and go off script again. Uh, and so, you know, we have, we have benefits from that as well. Because you're there, uh, we're learning what your, what your pain points are and what your challenges are. And so one of the programs that we've had here for a long time is a manufacturing engineering degree, which was in the not too distant past changed its name to product design and manufacturing engineering. Uh, design for manufacturability or engineering for manufacturability is a big priority of spirit. Uh, working with that digital thread throughout the whole digital disruption that's happening in manufacturing is something that your company is really focused on. And our faculty who can interact and, and, and we can learn and see what those problems are and how manufacturing is changing is allowing us to update the curriculum. And we're completely revamping that degree so that we can provide a workforce for you uh, that will meet those needs. Yeah, and, and it's creating connections we never thought would exist. I, I think a good example of that we have a, our team up here is actually working with something called Cobots, which is robots and humans working in the same space together um, to help with repetitive tasks. And we needed to actually convey that message to our leadership uh, to help help drive the, the project forward. And we're also using it with our customer. We needed someone that could help us develop that. And someone here at WSU went, well, hey, we have this thing called Shocker Studios. Then they have some kids, uh, some students there that are looking for for a, really a value-added opportunity, and we were able to uh, develop a concept video of what we're trying to really implement. And they, the feedback that we've had from the students is this is a great thing. We actually get to work on a, a realistic or a, um, a, a meaningful problem. And for us, it's great because we get to, uh, to show them what matters to us. And, and so it, it really works both ways. That's great. Excellent. Yep. All right, so we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about where we've come from, what, where we're at now, uh, and we have just a couple more minutes left. Uh, and so let's think about, you know, what does success look like? That sort of uh, tired statement that's, the, you know, that people ask, what does success look like in five years? But, but how do we know if we've been successful? How do we know that we really are the international model for applied learning? How do we know if we really have achieved the promise of the innovation campus and what President Bardo had in mind when he set us about down this adventure? And I'm going to toss this up and let you guys sort of wrestle over it uh, and chime in. Well, since I just went, I'm just going to go ahead and tie it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, so for Spirit, I, I, our growth strategy is pretty bold. We want to be, we want to grow. We're the largest employer in, in Kansas. We want to maintain that title, and we think the pipeline here at Spirit is, or at uh, WSU, is really key to that. So success for us looks like winning some key programs based on the technology we're developing together and then having the workforce to be able to continue to fuel growth here in the community. I think at WSU Tech, uh, Dr. Utash is encouraging us to focus on collaborations with maximum impact. And so as we've sunsetted the WATC brand and we have stepped into our new brand and we're super proud of, of our new image and we're, we're creating new partnerships with the university, which is super exciting. So there's like really three areas I'm I get really into um, thinking about the opportunity for growth. The first is the shocker pathway. So in five to 10 years, what I would love to see is a super strong pipeline volume wise of students, but also quality caliber students that are you know, transferring into the university across the multiple colleges here at the university. Um, second of all, a strong pipeline from our Associate of Applied Science degrees that are more technical based, so like welding, machining, surge tech, things of that nature, and empowering our graduates that are coming from those programs um, to take advantage of the Bachelor of Applied Studies and Workforce Leadership and Applied Learning here at the university um, in partnership with the College of Applied Studies. So getting a really healthy pipeline of students and creating that awareness and making that really a fruitful relationship as well. And then the third, just what we would consider more typical two plus two articulation agreement opportunities, um, that we have multiple of those across the board as well. So, you know, maximum, maximum impact with those collaborations and building bridges for our students and empowering them to consider their long-term futures here at the university. Excellent. Excellent. I'm gonna go and piggyback off of the pipeline. With the Gear Up and Trio programs, we look to see the pipeline to bring students here to Wichita State University. 
But I also want to say within the five years that you're talking about, it's not going to be about the income. It's going to be about the outcomes that we produce here at Wichita State. And then we have to keep in mind that with the ROTC program here, who knows, we may produce the next general patent. Excellent. And final word? I think success, uh, specifically for students, would focus on our ability to find meaningful ways how we can link academic programs to meaningful personal and professional lives. And for all of us, faculty, staff, administrators, and members of this amazing community, it's our ability to connect our passion to our profession so we don't have to work a day in our lives. And of course, we're going to be led by a bold, transformative strategic plan. But it's really connecting that passion to our professions so that we are inspired and engaged in more ways that can be explained in words. Thank you, for all four of you. Appreciate it. What do you like about working at Wichita State? I think everybody's excited about where the university's going. Um, they're excited to see the change and be part of it and be like history in the making. The camaraderie that you get with faculty, staff, and students. And I think it's a lot of fun. And we always have new things happening. So you just, you, you don't want to miss out. The people, just the... Uh... All the different things I see, art, music, science, all interests of mine. So I enjoy just the, the atmosphere and the energy of the university. If Wu, uh, if he played an instrument, what instrument do you think he'd play? Oh, Wu would play the trombone, without a doubt, trombone. Ma'am, can you give me your best play angry face? No, ask him. Is there anything you'd like to add? Go shots. I don't know. Please say this really isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it really isn't going anywhere. <laughs> I think you did your task well, Tyler. That was really been fun. So thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, first of all, you know, uh, hopefully you're kind of getting the gist. We, you know, since you have what I call kind of the temp, uh, uh, and, you know, <laughs> did you read the article in the Business Journal and said we have a temp with some experience? So that's, I, that's what I kind of use as my byline. <clears throat> but I wanted to make sure that, you know, this whole idea of, of thinking about all this, you know, it'd be nice if we had others kind of expressing what's happening at the university, what's coming up this year, and what they're thinking rather than. You know, because my role, as you know, isn't to start some new initiative out here, some new uh, vision for the thing. Mine is to try to keep us moving forward and so forth. So would you help me thank all these people here for all the time they've put together to give us an idea? <clears throat> you know, as some of you may know, and I, I, I tell a lot of people this because I'm trying to be good at my exercising and keep my exercising up. But uh, weather permitting, I try to walk around the university every morning, and, uh, and I see some of you all out there so uh, along the way. But here is what real, and you know, now I've walked quite a few months, so I'm going, hey, I know the buildings now. This summer I made it made through every single building, so now I've been through all the buildings and all. But you know, I, the first thing that caught my eye was over here with the millipede, or what is that right? That's what it, yeah. So we had all those beautiful tulips. Then have you gone and looked then at now the, the floral arrangement around that right now? I mean, it's, it's out of this world. And then you think of the space that we have in this university. Once again, I walk it every, most every morning. And the, the way they have kept that space up and then going through those buildings and working in those buildings, I tell you what, we need to say a debt of thanks and debt of gratitude to our facilities and our landscaping staff. And thank you all. Super. Just been great. It's just exciting. I even got in Henryan. That's a different building. Uh, 
So, yeah, yeah. When they were when one of them at the press was going, well, you know, everything's pretty exciting. These buildings. I heard a few people snicker in the back, so I thought maybe they're thinking of hitting me. Anyway, the other one, one thing I want to express is my uh, sincere thanks for the kindness that you've had in kind of welcoming me this temp uh, to be with you over this time. And and the, and the bottom line is this, you know, it's a real privilege for me to be here and support your efforts. I mean, I sincerely feel that way. And so, you know, I'm all in and appreciate the chance that I have to try to help you uh, as we kind of transition to a new president. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I told someone before, and I'll go ahead and be kind of public with it. I said, so the challenge I have is I want you to know that I'm all in. I'm going to do everything I can for you. And at the same time, I'm saying, now, there is light at the end of the tunnel here, isn't there? <laughs> you know, someone said, or did you take a vacation this summer? I said, no. When the new president comes, I'm taking an extended vacation. So that's a, so you kind of have to look at it a little bit that way. Uh, as I said, one of my responsibilities is, is to look, you know, keep making, I mean, obviously, as you know, this, this role, you pay, make a lot of decisions. Things happen, and you have to make decisions. And so the one thing I'm trying to use, as you, I would hope you would think, hope of me, is that I'd say, okay, first of all, it's the best for the university. And number two, is this an, inst is this an instance where that new president needs to make this decision? Now, that's, I have to temper that with, do I put it off? Am I putting it off? You got what I'm trying to say? Is it something we probably need to go ahead and do now? But I, I have to think about it that way. So just so that you all know, those are kind of the standards I'm using. Best for the university. Is this something I think that new president probably needs to weigh in on before we make a, a final decision on it? Uh, <clears throat> a major part of the success, I'm gonna, I've got a little something I want to read here because, you know, once again, one of my own, only gems. Uh, <clears throat> a major part of the success of any institution is the collective will of those who are part of it to help it continuously improve. In our instance, this means that together, we need to focus on making this a great place for our students, a welcoming place for our community, and a good place for us to do our work. I believe we can, if we all can do that in the coming months, anybody who's looking at trying to be our next president is gonna feel like they're the luckiest person in the world. Because I can tell you, after meeting some of you over the time, visiting with people from a lot of walks of life here and in our community, this is a special place, and we know we've got to make sure we keep it that way. A couple of things I wanted to tell you about. The Board of Regents is going to have a visit to our campus. So they've gone on a little different schedule, uh, and now they have months they're not doing a meeting. And in October 16th and 17th, I believe, they're going to have a visit to our campus, and you all, some of you have been here a while know that they do visits like that. You know, in that, we will make sure they visit with some students some faculty and some staff while they're here, as well as selected programs and so forth, and we will make sure you know about uh, that schedule when we get it done. Another thing I wanted to mention, and, I, and you know, we can't downplay this because it's so important. This is the final year, and I always say the wrong thing. I usually say sock the nation. They say, no, it's the shock the world campaign. So the Shock the World campaign, this is the final year of that. But if you haven't been paying attention, let me help you here. The goal of that, and you know, some of these facilities that Emily's talking about, those were all paid for in that Shock, Shock the World campaign. So the goal was to raise $250 million. That's a lot of zeros for me. But anyway, the last I heard from her, we're in the 280s, and we have another year to go. So that's pretty great, isn't it? So all of you, all that staff and all of you who've played a role in that, way to go. Congratulations. But I want to also then say, well, Andy, if this is the last year, what's this year? I mean, if you already raised the $280 million, what would you have? This is an extremely important year because in this year, it's focused on raising funds to support our faculty. And I love this. So guess what? I don't know. The promotions may be out there already. And there may be on the billboards. I don't know. You know, I haven't looked as close as I probably need to. But this is a year where we're, you know, the whole idea is how can we raise funds, maybe endow chairs if they can do that, if they can say, here are the faculty projects that we need or whatever. So be looking for those kinds of things, encouraging friends that you think might want to be able to help us with that. Because guess what? It's very important, and you all know. I mean, here's the, here's the thing I've known all my life. I am supporters of the people who deliver the mission. 
I am a supporter of the people who deliver the mission. And our faculty and our staff are the people on the day and today basis that deliver that mission. And this is an important project for us. So I hope we're having a great year with that also. Uh, so I have one final thought because I know they always put me right between you and food. <laughs> and I understand that. <clears throat> so my hope for this year is that we can find joy in our work and joy in our relationships with one another. You know, it, it's hard for me to say, this is a choice. This is a choice that we make about our relationships with others and about what we're doing. You know, I've, I've thought, of, and of course, you know, this, this is my 50th year uh, in career. And I, I keep thinking, getting up every day and not liking anything about what I'm doing, what a terrible, I've been so blessed in my life. And I keep thinking, what can we do in our relationships with one another to lift each other up or to and try to help them feel good about themselves and what they're doing? So that's one of the things I want to encourage us. But here's the thing that's been striking me so much in, in I don't know, maybe it's in the last 10 years, but I think that we have been blessed with the opportunity and the responsibility for three societal things. So we can look at, a, you know, I show our mission to people. We spoke to the governor's council a couple of weeks ago. I showed them our mission. But when you roll all of that up, we have, I think, three societal responsibilities. The first of those is to prepare our students for careers. And you heard some examples today of those, I mean, exact lines of where we're trying to help them think new things we're doing to try to make it worth their time and, and, and get them connected to business so they walk right into business, a very important part of what we do. But a second part of our societal responsibility is to prepare our students to have meaningful lives. And because all of us know that the, the biggest problems in life aren't only because of the, what's happening in my work life. It's in happening in my relations with human beings. It's happening in how I'm feeling about myself and all kinds of things that happen to us. We have an obligation in that. That's part of our responsibility and our privilege to be able to help our students with that. But the third one that I think we have forgotten sometimes is that our, we have an obligation to prepare our students for citizenship. So why I say this is that we have to remember that these things that we do to try to improve ourselves, to try to improve opportunities for students or whatever it may be, they're still in service to those three societal principles. And I, I was visiting with new faculty a minute yesterday, and so and I told them I might repeat this today. So it's, it struck me, so I'm going to repeat it today. Uh, and that is that we are unique in this world. If you've been around the world, many of you have, you know. What has distinguished the American higher education system? I can tell you what it is. That we have a foundation of what we try to do for all of our students. We tend to call it general education. But we have this foundation that we think helps us in meeting those three societal responsibilities. To be, have meaningful lives, to be good citizens, and to be prepared for good careers. And so I think we have to realize that we, part of our continuous improvement all is to say, how do we keep making better things for them? And as you all are saying, you're looking at the general ed curriculum, and how do we keep making that general ed curriculum, that distinguishing feature, of American higher education even better in helping us meet those societal responsibilities. One thing I think helps me realize the importance of these things and brings joy in my life is always realizing that I am a part of something bigger than myself. Uh, someone asked me about when I've looked at, you know, I was in a position where we hired presidents and so forth, and I've always told them, I said, a dividing line in this for me has always been, is it about them or is it about the university? And I say that because I think the place you find, can find that meaning, whether I am planting the flower over here, I'm helping someone find their way around campus, or I'm in a research project that lands me uh, this kind of recognition, that gives me that joy is to know that this is helping something bigger than me. 
So I think that's something I'd ask you as you think about how can we have joy in our work this year and in our relationships. Remember how important it is what all of us do to make this place work. Each of you collectively make a difference in the lives of our students, in each other, in our community, and even beyond that. So my sincere thanks to each of you for making this such a special place. Now it's time to go party. So uh, let, let's say thanks to all the people who have helped us organize this today. We thank you for being here. The party is downstairs. Enjoy. <laughs>